Hey guys, Nolly here. I just wanted to do a quick demonstration to talk a little bit about velocities when programming drums, and specifically how you can find the best sweet spot for all the different drums and cymbals that we have in the GGD Matt Halpin pack. Um, so I've got a little bit of a groove programmed here. It's just a simple repeating riff. Um, I'll start by hitting play. Basically, you can see it's cut into two halves. The first half has the drums programmed as I would program them with the, uh, the velocities done uh, the way that they should be, as far as I'm concerned. In other words, the hits are roughly about what you would get if you recorded a really good drummer like Matt in the studio. So here's how it sounds, just so you can, you can hear it. Cool. So you've had a chance to hear the clip there. Um, so really the place I'd like to start, uh, I'm going to pull up this piano roll, and uh, I'd like to start with the kick drum. Now, uh, those of you that are familiar with Logic will recognize this as the drum programming um, area. It looks very similar to most other doors apart from Cubase, which has an excellent drum programming um, map that you can use. Uh, the map I'm using here is also the standard GGD map. So. Uh, this would correspond to the default state of GGD when you when you load it up. Um, something interesting to know, I'm just going to choose this snare hit here. Um, the velocity when it's on full shows a very red blob, um, gradually going back down through the colors to a kind of cool purple. So um, you can see that none of my hits are really in the red. In fact, the only hit that's really showing full velocity would be this flam all the way over here um, on the snare. Um, but the, the important thing really as far as the kick goes is to understand a little bit of how um, a kick drum is struck. So there's two ways you can really hit a kick drum. Uh, one is is to allow the beater to bounce back when you hit. And what that allows is the, the batter head, the head that's struck by the beater to freely move and you get a resonance of low end. You get a lot more low end out of the, the drum that way. Um, the other way is what's known as burying the beater, which is when you're kicking, especially really hard, um, you tend to kind of, because you're putting so much force in, stick the beater against the head um, after it strikes. So that, that batter head that you're hitting is completely stopped. So there's no resonance going on. What you get from that is a really, really huge attack out of the kick drum, um, but you actually lose some low end. Now, the very hardest hits that we recorded for the sample pack were Matt burying the beater to get the most out, uh, attack out of the drum. Sometimes that's appropriate, but one thing I'd really like to urge anyone out there that's programming with Get Good Drums or similar software is to stray away from those really heavy hits um, if you can, because although it might initially sound really nice and uh, pleasing to have such a huge amount of attack, something closer to a kind of metal kick drum sound off the bat, you'll find that you actually get a very unrealistic sound that doesn't have much low end to it. If you back off the velocities, however, to... Uh, see, I'm, I'm programming here about 117 is about the hardest hits I'm going to with the kick. There's a lot of lighter ones, kind of more around 99 um, or, yeah, 98. Yeah, you get, you get the idea. Um, kind of somewhere between about 90 to 115 or so um, is probably going to give you that, that kind of sound. Now... Um, the sound that you get is not going to have as much attack, as I mentioned, as the full velocity hits, but what you are going to get is that low end. And if you then go and EQ the kick drum to have more low end, and you use some compression to get some additional attack out of the drum as well, what you'll find is you get a way more balanced sound that sounds really good in the mix. So um, that's what I'm using here, and you can certainly hear that the kick drum doesn't have any issue with lack of weight. I'll just play you a short clip again so you can hear. <laughs> And just to show you what a full velocity hit would sound like, it's, um, well, that's the full velocity hit. So it's still got plenty of attack. Double click that a few, many, two times. Um, anyway, so uh, that would be my, my main tip with the kick. Now, something else to note is if your drummer is doing a one footed double, that is to say they're doing two hits really close together. Uh, with just one foot without using the double pedal. What typically happens is they hit the first hit with the ball of their foot and the second hit gets the full weight of the leg behind it. And what you get um, is the, the first hit's always a lot lighter than the second hit. So 
Um, right here, for example, you can see there's two hits in sequence there. There's one which is really quite weak. It's down about 85. The second one's up at 107. Um, that's me kind of emulating that. It's good to know that that's what drummers do uh, at a kind of tempo like this where it would be a bit weird to use the double pedal. It's not really fast enough to warrant it. Um, but that is going to be the natural variation that you get. And if I just play that bar for you, um, you'll hopefully hear that, that kind of uh, bit of uh, fluidity to the, to the kick drum sound on those hits. So we're talking about these two right here. You probably see it over there as well. You kind of get this dun da kind of sound. Um, that's something that Matt specifically does a lot with his playing as well. So um, if you want to hear that in action, maybe go check out his videos of doing the drum through, uh, drum playthrough videos or listen to the albums and you'll be able to perceive a bit of that in there. You can also see over here when I've done a fair amount of sequential hits, I'm also imagining that he's doing that with just one foot. Um, and I've kind of varied the, temp the, the velocities a, a little bit between like 98 uh, to 104. And then I'm kind of finalizing that with a harder hit as we reach uh, bar six here and he's hitting with two crashes at the same time. It's kind of a more emphatic accent to happen there. So it's worth kind of going and kind of micromanaging the velocities of these hits a little bit to get the best result because it does sound a bit unrealistic if you just program everything at 127 velocity. Now, actually what I have over here on the second half is everything programmed at 127 velocity. So if I just hit play there, you'll see the difference. So really note the difference on these uh, these strings of hits here and then the, the doubles. a subtle difference but I guarantee you if you mess with it you'll really be able to get a, a feel for it and you'll really be able to get a lot more uh, usable real sounding results out of that. A slightly similar thing happens to the snare as well when you hit a snare drum really hard what you tend to do is kind of choke the dynamic level of the of the drum there's kind of a an optimal loudness an optimal amount of strength you can hit a drum with um, before it starts to get that kind of choked character a bit similar to what happened with the kick although it's just through sheer sheer weight of hitting um, and we definitely went to that level, that kind of beyond hard level, and we sampled the snare drums for the GGD pack because Matt is a very hard hitting drummer, and you know on occasion he might hit at that strength. But um, for me, if you want to get the best sounding snare hits, uh, it's about finding the point where the velocity curve reaches the rim shots, which are where the the stick is catching the edge of the drum as he's hitting, because um, that's when you get a, a nice kind of pop, kind of deftones y attack from the snare drum. Um, but not the very hardest velocities, which do send, tend to sound a bit too choked. And you'll notice they have like a very spiky sound um, to them, which is not really that pleasing, to be honest. So I'm tending to program my, my snares around 118 here, um, or thereabouts, like 118 up to 122, even on that one, 122. Okay, so I'm going fairly hard, but I'm not going all the way up to the full velocity, um, which would be triggered probably a couple higher than that. Um, Try anywhere between 110 to 120. Maybe I've kind of overcooked it a little bit in this demo. Um, however, here when I had the snare flam, I did program that at full velocity right there. Um, because, I don't know, the flam is a real heavy accent, and that's the kind of thing where when you're hitting with both hands on the drum, you might be able to get a bit of extra power than when you're kind of riding a groove. So um, that's for the hard hits. On the softer end of things, if you're programming ghost notes, like, for example, this little, uh, little double uh, hit here, and over here during the final fill, uh, the um, you might want to be taking the velocity quite far down. Actually, you can see we've programmed. Uh, I've programmed this about 33 on the velocity scale. 36 for that one. Sorry, 36 for that one. These two, uh, 33 and 36 for those two. Something way down there where you get the real light center hits with the drum. Um, something that Matt uses a lot in his drumming, very worthwhile experimenting with and listening to drummers that use ghost notes to get a feel for how they use them because. Um, I haven't programmed a ton in this riff here, but um, there's plenty of parts in periphery songs or in a lot of the bands that I work with where the drummers use ghost notes to kind of add this um, uh, sense of a driving nature behind a beat and just kind of filling in the space um, around the grooves that they're playing. It's a very cool technique. Or if you're doing fills like this, which is slightly more gospel inspired, where you're alternating between tom hits with the right hand and kind of these gentle fluttery ghost notes with the left. Um, yeah, try dropping all the way down to, yeah, like about 30. Um, in fact, these are a little bit heavier here, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, somewhere between, I guess, about 30 up to 40 is going to be ideal for that. Um, 
same thing's going to happen with Toms as well. Like the very hardest hits, you're going to get all the attack and less of the satisfying resonance. And what you're going to find when you try and level these in the mix is it's difficult to find a level uh, for the Toms to be mixed at because if they have too much attack, the attack really cuts through and pokes through the mix too much. But you don't really hear the sustain of the drums. Um, and likewise, if you want to kind of get the attack level to to a nice point, you, yeah, again, the, the sustain is just going to be gone. You have to really crank them to hear that sustain. So for me, the kind of sweet spot with these toms is, yeah, this is about 107. It's still a hard hit. Don't get don't get the wrong impression. Like at that point, it's probably harder than most drummers play when they're actually playing. Um, but it's still going to have um, a more kind of natural amount of uh, resonance to attack. Um, ratio, which is going to mean that when you come to leveling them in the mix, it's going to be a lot easier to find the point where um, you can hear the attack and the resonance equally, and they don't sound like they're just being tickled. Um, so here you can just hear those those tom hits uh, in isolation. Um, that's kind of there's like a floor tom and snare flam going there, so I'm hitting that floor tom perhaps a little bit harder just for that, because it's like a heavy accent. Um, over here, we've got, instead of the ghost note that I programmed the first time around, I actually did like a kind of floor tom ghost thing, which is, again, something that Matt might play. Uh, again, I'm going real light with those hits there. I mean, they're not like real light, but, um, but pretty light, especially the first one around kind of 54, um, about 80 on that second hit there. Uh, and the idea is I don't, I'm not trying to get like a super attacky sound out of that. I just want like a kind of ghosted note that's a different, um, diff just a different tone than uh, using the snare for the ghost note. So. Uh, this is what that sounds like, just so you can hear it again. Something a bit more flowing than a full velocity hit. And um, let's see, moving on from the toms, we've got our, uh, our symbols in general. Um, I'm not too afraid of programming the crashes quite hard in terms of velocity. You can see I'm going up to, I think that hits yeah, 126. That one's pretty hot as well, but over here we've got yeah 110 to 120 going on for the most part. Um, to me, crashes do sound good when they're hit quite hard. Typically, when you're recording a drummer, you ask them not to hit the cymbals too hard because they really overpower the drum shells in the room mics and in the close mics, and you end up having to use samples to compensate to be able to uh, process, for example, the snare drum, EQ and compress it the way you want. You tend to bring up a whole load of uh, cymbal bleed, hi-hat bleed, if the drummer's hitting those hard because they're being recorded simultaneously. One of the beautiful things about working with sample drums is you don't have any of those concerns. Um, so in this case, I've chosen to actually program the crashes quite, quite hard so that we're getting a, no a nice attack from them. Um, but I'm not quite going up to the very full velocity, which can tend to get that kind of like tearing silk, kind of just too hard, choking the cymbal uh, dynamically. Um, but I certainly don't have an issue with that. And once we move to the China, it's the same deal. The China especially just sounds great when it's being attacked really hard. So I don't have any hi-hats actually programmed in this part, but I can quickly uh, mock that up by just moving these crashes down. So... I'm going to go with the second most open hits there. Um, that's with the shoulder hits, not the tip ones. Um, now, hi-hats are just a really loud instrument in general. Uh, they're actually a lot louder than crashes or, uh, or chinas for the most part. They tend to be really loud because you're smashing two pieces of metal together. Um, and it's very typical for those to be hit a little bit less hard um, than perhaps the crashes would be uh, when drummers are playing. That's not to say that they necessarily sound best when hit soft. It's kind of up to you to decide. but. Something to be aware of is that hi hats kind of start to cancel each other out if you hit them too hard. The, uh, the yeah, the, the two pieces of metal kind of clash against each other so much that uh, you start to get a shorter sustain rather than a longer one. At least the way that Matt sets his hi hats up, which are typically quite loose. Um, so you might find that you prefer the sound with weaker hits, perhaps more kind of down in like the the nineties. So I'll just show you what that sounds like. <laughs> So that to me sounds like a really good uh, level for the hats, but you know if you want to crank them, you certainly can. Um, and that would sound well. Actually, those are all at uh, varying velocities. There, I'll just quickly make those all exactly the same velocity at uh, 127. So that would sound like this. <laughs> Maybe you guys can hear what I mean, that that's kind of getting a bit too much attack. It sounds a little bit weird uh, being hit repeatedly like that. Like, bear in mind, Matt, when he was hitting those, is like doing a, a big kind of run up to the hit. 
that's a way that no drummer really plays you know you'd have to be striking really hard like that and uh most drummers don't play like that especially in the studio so yeah for me kind of around this uh what was it like in the 90s maybe about 95 maybe a tiny bit harder than that but let's see what that sounds like again that sounds good to me you're still getting some attack there but it's a, it's a bit washier and got a bit more sustain to it so you know that's just my recommendation there um so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this i hope this helps you out with some drum programming um Definitely remember to stay away from the really hard hits on the kick uh, for the most part. Same thing goes for the snare and toms. Um, and then, yeah, with the cymbals, you kind of got to use your own taste there. You can take advantage of the fact that you don't have bleed to worry about um, like you do with live drums. Or you could try and program it uh, a bit more like a real drummer plays, but you might find that you have to rely on more compression and EQ to make it sound aggressive. So, so yeah, those are my tips there. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out Get Good Drums, then please do so. We're over at getgooddrums.com. Um, and yeah, speak to you all soon. Cheers.